those who would hurt the innocent. I give you this one warning. Beware my wrath. Hello everyone and welcome to Comic Book Time. My name is Aaron and this is my review of Beware the Batman, Episode 1. So, what did I think? I thought for the most part, um, where they're going with uh, this new Batman animated series... It's it's both good and and bad at the same time, but uh, I'll get into that uh, very soon. Let's talk about uh, what the show has going for it, and uh, basically the let's go start off with the cast first. So we have Anthony Riuverar, I believe that's how you say his last name. Hopefully, I'm not butchering it. So he plays Batman and Bruce Wayne, obviously the same character. J.B. Blunk, who plays Alfred, a very different Alfred, you know, a bald Alfred. And, uh, you know, not like a, a butler type, as we see in the animated series. We have our two villains, Professor Pig and Mr. Toad. So they're in this episode. They are the main villain of this episode. So let's get into the, uh, the story right now. So the basic plot synopsis, or the premise of this episode, is Professor Pig and Mr. Toad steal uh, certain individuals who have been uh, basically destroying the ecosystem or who who which they deem fit that are actually like destroying like you know the ecosystem so uh, Professor Pig and um, Mr. Toad go and they kidnap them and uh, they make uh, they post a lot of videos uh, I, I think it's on the internet saying that uh, you know basically telling telling society what they've done and what they've done wrong and, and kind of like just uh you know making a mockery of them and Bruce Wayne becomes a target of one of those individuals and that in turn uh involves uh Batman trying to save uh you know uh, CEOs like you know Stag and but really the the thing that gets him to go after uh after uh, Professor Pig and Mr. Toad is that Bruce Wayne has been has been put as a target and Alfred has been indirectly uh, captured by our two villains and that's ba that's where it goes so what did I what did I like about the uh, the series premiere well I think I think they have the essential uh, essential feeling of Batman down uh, it's it seems um, everything except for uh, the villains seem to have a very dark tone even the uh, the CG art uh, animation seems to blend well into the tone of like you know, it being like Batman you know, kind of like a dark tone. Uh, another thing I'd probably uh, say this thing did well is uh, there I, I can I have a sense that they're trying to switch things up. I mean uh, when you look at Alfred, he um, you know he's definitely not uh, animated series Alfred or like Dark Knight. Uh, you know, Nolan's version of uh, Batman, or not Batman, Alfred. Almost, uh, he he reminds me of, if you took elements from Jeff Johns' version of Alfred in the Batman Earth 1 comic book, and then you, you basically took the facial construction of Agent 47 from the Hitman series, you put them together, and then now we have the Bat Boy of Batman, Alfred. So I thought that was interesting. They're trying to make their uh, the Bruce and Alfred relationship a bit different, which is always nice to do. Um, uh, another thing that I really enjoyed is there's a lot of detective work. I always love it when Batman does detective work because it's always like this interesting mystery that's happening, and you know that's one of the core you know elements of Batman. He is the world's greatest detective, and they put it in the episode, and I'm glad they did. So let's get into some of the bad or the uh, the problems with this actual episode. We need to talk about the villains. I think when I was watching this, they are setting up, especially from the very first opening scene. You can tell they're setting this up uh, to be like kind of a uh, a bit of a darker animated series, which I understand. And when you put uh, Professor Pig and Mr. Toad into that uh, you know art style and this kind of toned. It doesn't really fit. It ho horribly fits together, and it. I didn't care about any of the villains in this episode. You know, it really didn't do anything for me. And you know, you can you can always go back to uh, 
you know, the, they're trying to do something different. You know, I get that, and I think that's great. I mean, you know, change is always, you know, a good thing when you have so many Batman uh, series. But I think these these villains really don't fit together. I, I think, uh, hopefully, this is the last time we see them for in a long time because, honestly, I'd, I want to see new villains that haven't been really, like, mentioned. Like, I don't want to call them, like, C villains, you know, C class villains. But I'd really wish if they had, like, you know, lesser known villains and then we get a really well known villain. Like, maybe we have, uh, like, yeah. One episode we might have uh, Raza Gol, and that's like a that's I think that's an A character, and then we have that mixed in with you know the kind of unknowns, the you know the only characters that you wouldn't you would only really know from you know the comic books, you know, Professor Professor Pig and Mister Toad, you know, probably not being uh, <laughs> well exposed in any Batman you know pop culture, except for maybe you know in some of the deeper comic books, but. Some of the uh, other problems I have with this would probably be the uh, CG. I know this is gonna take 100%. I know this is gonna take uh, a couple, a couple episodes, maybe even a full season to get used to the CG. But you know, I did get used to even the Green Lantern series. You know, before DC canceled it for some unexplicable, godless reason. Um, I'm still probably gonna. I'm having a hard time adjusting to the CG. I mean, you you go back to the animated series, you know, Bruce Tim, the whole, basically, it's it's hard to adapt. But hopefully, I do adapt to this. But you know, I think it's gonna be hard to adapt to you know the CG that they have in here. And you know, we can talk about uh, what DC and DC Nation's doing with their TV shows. I mean, you know, I know everyone's up in arms about. Uh, you know, Young Justice, and I could talk about uh, where they're going wrong and how uh, we're being oversaturated with Batman uh, animated series and not enough, you know, series like maybe a new Superman animated series or like even a new Static Shock series. But that's another time for another video. So I guess my final thoughts on the first episode or the series premiere of Beyond the Batman, uh, I think my general thoughts would be uh, I definitely liked it. I liked what they what they're doing with it. Uh, I think they do have the potential to make something, you know, something above average. I say above average because this is, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to live up to the other animated series that have uh, come out with Batman. You know, especially when I'm talking about the, you know, the animated series, uh, classic animated series. You know, with Kevin Conroy's Batman, and you know. It's going to be, they have big shoes to fill, but hopefully they can uh, attempt at it, and hopefully they can create something new. So, I'm going to give Beware the Batman, Episode 1, Hunted, a 7 out of 10. So, definitely go and uh, watch this. I mean, this is probably going to be debated, you know, until the end of time. Or, you know, not really until the end of time, but it's going to be debated heavily on, you know, probably on the internet and forums and you'll probably see a lot of reviews and a lot of discussion I think you're going to hear that because there's been a lot of stuff happening with DC Nations uh, a lot of negative stuff mostly but still there is going to be a lot of discussions about this and that's it for the review thank you so very much for watching make sure to like and subscribe you can hit the annotations on the screen you can check out my Pacific Rim review, movie review and you can also check out my Comic Book Time podcast for July 10th, 2013, where I reviews the comics that came out that week. Thank you for watching.